one pick away. One pick away from having every game right this week. Fucking see y'all. What is up, you guys? This is Between the Pylons, and I am your host, John Camacho. Let's jump right into this thing. First of all, don't forget to like, subscribe, follow me on Twitter, at Between Pylons, all that good stuff. If you are interested in more football talk, please uh, go subscribe to the podcast, Between the Pylons podcast I do with my buddy Jacob. Every week we talk football nonstop. Uh, It is a blast. We'll talk college and NFL, so if you are interested in some of my college takes, uh, that is where you'll find most of them, and then I do dive a little bit deeper into a lot of my NFL thoughts. Uh, let's jump in right into this thing, and I am going to be 100% honest. I did not get a chance to watch every game this Sunday, and the reason for that is I was in Tunica with uh, my friends. We had my buddy's bachelor party in Tunica this weekend, and I didn't get back until around 2 o'clock on Sunday, so I caught about the fourth quarter of all the games, and I'll be honest, guys, like, after watching, after you know, spending about 48 hours in Tunica and driving home and watching all the games Sunday night, I was so tired that I started to uh, you know kind of do my notes and I had to do a little bit more research on the morning games because I didn't want to sound like an idiot. And I just realized I was not giving, I was not going to be able to put in the uh, the time and energy that this video deserves. And I wasn't going to be able to give it my best, uh, my best takes because I was just really tired. I'm not going to lie to y'all. And uh, so what I did was I went to sleep, woke up Monday morning, had to go to work, and uh, spent a lot more time tonight. Uh, I'm recording this Monday night, record, uh, really wanting to uh, give you guys the best that I can give you. I uh, put a little bit more uh, research into things. I, I still try and keep this video kind of light. I don't want to get too much into the stats or uh, too too far into the weeds. I really just want to talk about you know kind of the reaction for the games and how this uh, makes it how this looks moving forward. Uh, but it was it was nice to do a little bit more research and hopefully you guys appreciate that. Uh, if and you guys can let me know let me know what you guys uh, want out of these videos because I'm always you know interested in improving and doing better and really you know whatever like I love making this but I'll you know I do so much re- research during the week I can you know start recording these on Mondays and give you a little bit more uh, insight and maybe give me a little bit more time to reflect on things. Or I can keep the uh, Sunday schedule where it's just kind of raw reactions to the week. Um, whatever you guys think, let me know in the comments what, what uh, you would prefer. And uh, we're going to keep this rolling, guys. Uh, let's get started. The Rams beat the ever-living hell out of the Falcons 37-10. to Falcons fall to 1-6. and The Falcons are injured. The Falcons uh, lose Matt Ryan during the uh, game. He has an ankle sprain. The severity of that is not yet known as of this recording. Uh, The Rams are able to snap a three-game losing streak, which is huge for the Rams. They go to four and three, and I mean, it's the Falcons. The Falcons are one and six. They haven't beat anybody this year, um, except for the Eagles, for whatever reason. Um, But they had to have this one. They really did. Todd Gurley looked great. Uh, Jalen Ramsey looked great. It was a it was a good team win. Not gonna lie, you guys didn't catch a lot of this game. Uh, it was it was an on track game for the Rams. I, I, even if I was here all day on Sunday, I probably wouldn't have watched a lot of this game. Uh, the Rams just uh, boat raced the Falcons, and then uh, moving on to the Dolphins at Bills. Uh, this is a little bit of a different game. I feel like the Dolphins hung in there. I mean, I was shocked. Like I like I said, I didn't didn't see the beginning of these games and was shocked to see the Dolphins were winning at halftime 14 to 6. I was very excited, or excuse me, 14 to 9. Um, they were actually up 14 to 9 going into the fourth quarter and that's when the uh, the Rams or the Bills were able to uh, pull off a couple touchdowns and pretty much uh, make the game out of reach. And I will say this this game the score should be 21 uh, to 24. The only reason it's a 21-31 uh, ending is because the uh, uh, Minka Hyde 
returned an onside kick for a touchdown, which was it was a great play. If you get a chance, go look it up because I mean he does a little spin move as he catches it and just races to the end zone. It was it was a great play. Hurt me a little bit, but we'd already lost, so whatever. Uh, Tre'Davious White came up big in this game. I mean, the Bills' defense in general still, you know, is great. Uh, the fact that they allowed the Dolphins to score 21 points is kind of surprising, but a lot of that was some Fitz magic, honestly. Fitzpatrick played a great game for the Dolphins, really led the Dolphins, put the Dolphins in a, in a good opportunity, a good chance to win the game. And the Bills, you know, offense kind of uh, struggled, didn't really come alive until the fourth quarter, and that's kind of been a trend. That's my biggest fear for this 5-1 and Bills team that is looking to be a dominant, you know, AFC contender, their offense needs to be just a little bit better. They need to get get on track. Josh Allen has to pick it up just a little bit, and this team can be very dangerous. They really can. We're going to move on to another really bad matchup, the Jaguars and the Bengals. Uh, the Jaguars kept this game kind of close. It was 9-10 going into the fourth quarter, and again, the uh, Jaguars came alive. Fournette uh, carried this team again. Uh, 29 carries for 131 yards. Uh, Garner Minshew still making some magic. He's not putting up the gaudy numbers, uh, but he is. Too, he's putting his team in a great position to win. I said this for a couple weeks now. The Jaguars need to keep Garner Minshew. They need to. They need to uh, stick with this guy. I think he has the opportunity to be the franchise for the Jaguars, and he's perfect for them, too. And I know I keep saying that. Uh, Bengals dropped to 0-7, and seven, a winless team, very bad team in the category with the Dolphins and the Falcons. Uh, yeah, these these teams aren't going to win a lot of games. They just aren't. And uh, if you are playing Survivor uh, this season with the, with the NFL, you got a lot of good options, you know. Just pick against the Falcons, Dolphins, or Bengals, and you're you're doing good. It's it's a nice easy week for uh, or year for because there's just a lot of really bad teams this year. Uh, I don't know what to say about the Bengals. I don't I don't know what the issue is. I it's everything. I don't know. Moving on from the uh, Jaguars and Bengals, we are going to talk about the Vikings and Lions, and this is. This is a game I got to see most of. I was able to stream it on my phone on the way down. It was the only game I was able to really watch uh, the full of the morning games. It was the only game I was really able to focus on. The Vikings beat the Lions 42-30. to uh, it's, a, it's a 12 point win or 12 point difference in uh, score. But in my opinion, the this was a closer game than it looked. The Lions, I mean, they've been playing really well to be two, three, and one. That is kind of surprising. Like you look, you look at the season as a whole, and they played really good football. Uh, they've been in a lot of games. I would consider them to be in this game. They were definitely in the uh, they were definitely in the Jag- the Packers game last, uh, I believe, Monday night. They played very well, but they're two, three, and one, and and that is a little bit surprising. Um, it's it's just a it's a good not great football team and they're struggling they're not able to uh, pull it out against the uh, good teams in the NFL and then on the other side of the, the matchup the Vikings are five and two uh, three weeks ago we were talking about oh can uh, Kirk Cousins throw the ball the receivers were unhappy well yeah he can throw the ball and the way this uh, this is the game that kind of shows me that maybe this team is real because I do think the Lions defense is very good I think it's among the top. 10 to 15 defenses in the NFL, and the Vikings were able to throw. The Vikings were able to run. They were able to kind of do whatever they want, and you could tell that the uh, threat of the run really impacted the pass. It was, I mean, exactly what you want as a coach, as a game planner. I mean, they were able to run their offense to perfection, and Kirk Cousins looks good right now. And the only issue is, I mean, we know from recent history that's going to change. At some point, Kirk Cousins is going to go back to bad Kirk Cousins and you just <laughs> sorry sorry Vikings fans but you're gonna have to play a primetime game and and that's when you'll prove to me that Kirk Cousins can be worth 84 million dollars basically uh, but right now they are rolling like I said five and two they are second in a very good division behind the Packers we'll get to them later but they they are a great football team they might be playing without Adam Thielen for the next couple weeks Adam Thielen goes down with a hamstring injury on that touchdown catch, which was a beautiful touchdown catch. Um, uh, Cousins threw, uh, was 24 for 34 for 337 yards and four touchdowns. It was 
amazing game for Kirk Cousins, as I said. Uh, Cook had 25 carries for 142 yards and another two touchdowns. I mean, that that is beautiful. Like As I said with the, the offensive game plan, that is the offense they want to run. That is the, the stat line they want to see. You know, Of course, that's easy to say, but I mean, they're, they're able to throw efficiently through by running the ball incredibly efficiently. Cook is, in my opinion, the uh, the piece of this offense that makes the entire offense go. And, I mean, it is, you know, 42 points against the Lions is, is a very, very impressive accomplishment, in my opinion. Uh, Stafford is the fastest quarterback to get to 40,000 yards, which I thought was really cool. And, and, and I do want to talk about this. Marvin Jones, four touchdowns uh, uh, yesterday for Marvin Jones. In my opinion, Marvin Jones is kind of, over the past couple of weeks, for me, my rankings, he's he's hit that next level. He is he is among the almost elites. I mean, to me, for a long time, he's always just been an average wide receiver. I'm, I'm leveling him up. I'm calling him a little, I'm not going to say elite, but he is right under in that, uh, right under the elite category, in my opinion. Marvin Jones is, is absolutely killing it this year. He's making himself a lot of money, first of all, and he's helping this team immensely. And it, it's really cool to see. And he's coming up against, you know, good talent. Like the, the Vikings cornerbacks are very, very good. He, they've played, he's played well when he's needed to. Four touchdowns, obviously, and he is he is doing whatever he wants to defenses right now, and uh, it, it is really really fun to see. And uh, the only other notes I have here: Carry on Johnson and Darius uh, Slay left the game. Carry on Johnson uh, is said to they're expecting him to miss a couple weeks, according to Adam Scheffner. Although uh, Matt Patricia did say that uh, Carry on he. He said something very vague in a uh, press conference that Carrion says he's okay or whatever it is. I believe it's a hamstring issue for Carrion. I could be wrong on that. I didn't write it down. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, that that's going to hurt the Lions. The Lions are kind of getting uh, hit with injuries a little bit and it's not going to help them moving forward in a, uh, in a division where they have to play the Vikings again, they have to play the Packers again, they have to play the Bears. I mean, this, this team has a tough road to the playoffs and I mean I hope they can get there I think they I think they are a legitimate wild card team and they might be beat out by their own division mate the Vikings because the Packers are probably going to win this division as it stands right now uh, let's actually move on to the Packers the Raiders played the Packers in Lambeau uh, yesterday the Raiders uh, lost to the Packers in Lambeau yesterday 24 to 42 Aaron Rodgers went off, threw for five touchdowns, ran it in for another touchdown. Uh, here's here's the thing: he didn't only do that; he also scored, uh, threw the ball to it's uh, threw a touchdown pass to five different receivers. He did this without his number one receiver in Devontae Adams, who was out for the second week. Second second week in a row, I believe, could be the third uh, with turf toe. Uh, he did this against. I mean, he 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 did this with. You know, Lazard catching three catches for 42 passes, one of which was absolutely beautiful. Uh, a extending uh, catch right here, you know, gets hit as he's bringing the one-handed grab down and still lands in bounds, uh, still controls the ball. Uh, Lazard is a guy I would look at in fantasy uh, if if the injuries uh, keep it up for the Packers. I mean, MVS had so, had like three catches. Geronimo Allison had four catches. I, it was all over the field. He he absolutely diced up the pack the Raiders, and there was nothing they could do about it. And I was a little bit surprised by that. Not not that Aaron Rodgers can do that. I still think Aaron Rodgers is among. I mean, he going into last year, he was the best quarterback in the NFL, in my opinion. Uh, had some issues issues last year. I think uh, Patrick Mahomes kind of took that title from him uh, coming into this season. And as it stands right now, with Patrick Mahomes' injury. Aaron Rodgers is the best quarterback in the NFL right now, and he's proving to the NFL, hey, I'm still elite. I still make throws every single week that is absolutely amazing, absolutely beautiful, and there's, it's something to uh, it's something to note. I'm glad. I mean, he actually has an offense around him that's helping him. He actually has a run game in Aaron Jones. It's, it's amazing to see. This is what I wanted from the Packers, and I was so worried at the beginning of the season the offense wasn't clicking. And now it feels like they're clicking. And and if an, with an offensive scheme clicking, with Aaron Rodgers being Aaron Rodgers, that's going to be tough to stop. On top of having a good defense, that's going to be really tough to stop. Uh, talking about the Raiders for a second, I was wrong on this one. I, like I said, I, I thought the Raiders were going to win this game. 
Um, I thought that they were gonna be able to run on the Raiders, which or on the Packers, which they were. They had Josh Jones, Josh Jacobs, excuse me, uh, ran for I believe 124 yards, no touchdowns. Um, played very well. He is uh, by the, he's getting his usage a little bit up, which is what I've been wanting. It made no sense why he wouldn't be getting 90% of the touches because he is the most dynamic player on that team. Um, but it was not enough. The 24 points, which, you know, it was pretty good, I guess, uh, was not enough to uh, keep up with the Packers in any way. They kind of hung around for a little bit, uh, but uh, Derek Carr fumbles the ball out of the end zone for a touchback as he's trying to dive in for a touchdown. And uh, that was that was pretty much the game, and that happened, I believe, in the third quarter. And uh, it was over from there on out. Uh, yeah, the 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 Packers are legit in my opinion. I over the past, I believe it was last week. I talked about it on the podcast. I was a little bit worried about their run game. I was a little bit worried about the offense, and maybe it's the Raiders made them look better than they are. But that that fear has kind of subsided over the past two weeks, where they were able to get the win against a very good Lions defense. They had, they were able to boat race the the Raiders. Um, this team is legit. I really believe that. And if they can keep this going, not a lot of teams are going to stop them. They're, it's just not going to happen. Not with Aaron Rodgers running the ship. And we will move on to maybe the most impactful game of the weekend. Uh, the Texans at the Colts. The uh, Colts beat the Texans to go up 4-2 and two and take the lead in the division. Uh, they beat them 23-30. to uh, 30 And it, honestly, the game wasn't that close to me. Uh, the Colts had this game controlled uh, from the beginning, in my opinion. Uh, it was a interception from Deshaun Watson as he was pressured. He kind of throws a, throws a bad ball. Uh, it gets intercepted, and that was that was the game right there. This is before the beautiful uh, interception, like this far off the ground, like <laughs> literally this far off the ground. The the uh, linebacker intercepts a ball that was uh, <clears throat> that was uh, thrown to Kenny Stills, I believe. No, Kiki Kuti. Uh, it was thrown to Kiki Huti, and he kind of bobbled it and put, uh, threw it up just enough. That was the uh, that was the dagger that ended the game. But before that, uh, Deshaun Watson throws an errant throw, gets intercepted uh, in the fourth quarter, and the game was pretty much over from that point. Uh, Colts go out, win this game, and uh, they are. Uh, they are among the best teams in the NFL, or, or excuse me, in the AFC, in my opinion. Uh, Jacoby Brissett threw for 326 yards and four touchdowns. Jacoby Brissett deserves to be considered an elite, or not an elite quarterback, deserves to be in the conversation for among the top 10 quarterbacks in the NFL because he's doing everything right. He's taking care of the football. He's putting his team in, in great chances to win. And at times he's leading his team to win uh, when maybe the rest of the team isn't, uh, isn't performing the way they should. Um, it also helps that they're, they, I, I'm, I'm ready to promote Frank Wright in my, in my opinion, I'm ready to put him among the elite play callers in the NFL, and I do mean elite. He he is constantly putting his team in the best chance, the best place to win. He's constantly uh, coming up with new and creative uh, play design, play calls. I, I I really believe the Colts struck gold with this guy. I mean, absolutely struck gold. Uh, the I mean, it, this is crazy to say, but when uh, the Patriots OC. Uh, declines that job or agrees to take the job and then uh, pulls out the last second and Frank Wright gets the job, that could have been the best thing that happened to the Colts in a long time. Because, I mean, uh, we, we don't know what would happen with Josh McDaniels. He's already failed once in the NFL. What, uh, what could have happened again? We've seen Patriots uh, OCs fail plenty of times. You know, I'm hoping I'm wrong here, but, you know, it's not looking great for uh, for. Uh, Flores down in Miami. We've seen many others fail. Uh, we don't know what happened there, but Frank Reich is is killing it for the Colts, and I'm so so excited for what he he's doing for that team. And I mean, they're they're at the top of their division. They're four and two. They're rolling right now. I I don't see them losing a game anytime soon either. I think they they're in a position where they get to play the Jaguars twice, who they can beat. They get to play the Titans twice, who they can beat. They've already beat them once, uh, and they've. They've already, you know, their biggest competition is the Houston Texans. I think they're better than the Houston Texans. I think they are better all across the board. Uh, moving to the Texans side of the ball, the thing we need to talk about there is the uh, Wolf. First of all, Wolf Fuller has a significant hamstring injury. He left the game, so he is hurt. Um, 
I'm shocked he made it to week seven. I mean, honestly, uh, dude's been hurt every single season, can't stay healthy. Uh, he's a great wide receiver, but, you know, uh, availability is a skill. Uh, that just is the way it is what it is in the NFL. Uh, the big news, in my opinion, I'm shocked it's not getting more pub. Uh, the Texans traded a third-round pick for uh, Gary Young Connolly, uh, the cornerback for the Raiders, uh, which, you know, he was a first-round pick, I believe, three years ago, had the injury, uh, had all those uh, the uh, legal stuff happen, uh, you know, kind of fell to the bottom of the first round because he was expected to be, you know, a top-15 pick, I believe. Um, you know, maybe it wouldn't have been, but the, the, he definitely had some off the field issues that were in question. I believe those were resolved with no issues, but, uh, he again has the injury comes back, has not, has not looked as good as he could have. He, he came on to the end of last season, looked a little bit better in this season. Uh, it's been really up and down for Gary and Connolly. So the Raiders ship him off for a third, and now the uh, the Texans are are really all in. I mean, they're trading a third round pick. They already traded their first round pick to the Dolphins. I mean, you can't be more all in than the Texans are. I really, they they are do or die, and they're four and three. And I don't think they're good enough to be as all in as they are. Um, I God God help the the. Uh, GM that takes over this job. I don't think it's in a very pretty outlook. I know they have Deshaun Watson, so somebody's going to be excited about that. They have pieces, but I, as far as a team building standpoint, I, there, there's a lot of. I would be scared to take that job because you got to hit on some later on guys because you're you have a uh, franchise that has that has mortgaged their franchise to try and win now, and I don't think they're good enough to do that. I really don't. I still. I mean, they're a fringe playoff team, in my opinion. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes for them. I don't love that trade for Gary and Connolly. I don't think he was worth a third round pick, not to the Texans, uh, which they did get a third from uh, from the Seahawks for for uh, Clowney. But I mean, it's just it's. I don't feel like that's a great trade for them. Moving on, the Cardinals beat the uh, Giants 27-21. to The Cardinals are now on a three-game win streak, but please, everyone, pump the brakes a little bit. Yes, the Cardinals have beat three teams in a row. Yes, it's the NFL, and that is always impressive, but they have beaten the Bengals, Falcons, and Giants. And uh, by my count, that is a combined win total of three. Three wins among those three teams. Uh, that's that's not that impressive. Yes, the the Cardinals are the best of the worst teams. And that's the best way to say it. And yeah, it makes sense. They have the newest offense. They have the best quarterback probably. And yeah, they're they're able to squeeze out some wins against bad teams. They're not going to do this against good teams. Don't get excited. Don't don't place bets on this game on this team. Uh, don't over exaggerate their their skill level. It's just. Is still not that good. Um, they're doing some good things. There seems like they're going in the right direction, but I'm not ready to crown the uh, Cardinals as a team that is kind of, you know, moving up in the NFL by any means. Um, they still have issues all over the field. The offense is still, I mean, it's an air raid offense in the NFL, and I, I just haven't seen that work uh, the way I think maybe the Cardinals hoped so far. And I, I mean, we'll see how it goes uh, moving forward. Maybe we'll figure it out, but. I mean, the big news for the Cardinals is uh, Chase Edmonds uh, called out this week with uh, David Johnson, who was active but injured still. Like, they didn't want to play him unless they absolutely had to, which hurt a lot of fantasy teams, I'm sure. Helped me out a little bit, so I did appreciate that. Uh, it didn't actually matter. I don't think I still lost. Uh, um, but, yeah, Cardinals, Chase, Chase Edmonds, uh, a second-year guy out of Fordham. And I remember watching him last year and thinking, man, this dude is a man among boys, but how does it translate in the NFL? And, you know, Cardinals, I think, spent a six-round pick on him, and it has worked out for them so far. Uh, Giants are in a three-game losing streak. I would like to point out they, they did lose to the Vikings Pat and Pats, so, I mean, those were two L's no matter what, I feel like. Their two wins were against the Raiders and the Bucks. So I... I don't think this team is very good. Uh, I think I, I think uh, Daniel Jones is is playing well. He's 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 doing what he can, but this this roster isn't good. It's just not, and they're decimated with injuries on top of not being a great roster. Um, the outlook for either of these teams, I don't think it's that great. Um, I don't think either of these teams are worth spending much more time talking about. But you know, I love football, and I'll talk about it anyway. 
we will move on to the 49ers and Redskins. This game is gonna this is gonna be a quick one. The the game was a water bowl. I don't think you can take anything out of this. They they 49ers win nine to zero. Um, you, you just really have to scratch it. The biggest thing is, um, as far as stats go, if you are a, uh, a competent person as far as uh, creating stats or reading stats or anything along those lines, any any stat that involves season long for the Raiders and the Redskins moving forward, you should just cancel this game out because it's not fair. It's not fair to judge Jimmy Garoppolo. It's not fair to judge the run game. It's not fair to judge the defense. I mean, this this was the better team beating the worst team. But I mean, they they did what they had to do, and that was about it. Like they they weren't able to move the ball a lot, and it was tough. I mean, it was an absolute. I mean, it was an absolute shit show. Um, it, you know, it was, I, the highlights were fun. Just it was. It's cool to see Nick Bosa sliding across the uh, sliding across the field uh, like it's a water slide after uh, sacking sacking Keenum. But other than that, nothing is worth taking from this game. It's just not. It's it's not fair to either team to surmise anything from this game. All right, let us talk about probably the best game of the week. I mean, it's crazy to say that. The Chargers and Titans, best game of the week. Um, or at least the game that I have the most notes on because, I mean, I, I found it fascinating. I really did. Uh, first of all, you know, we'll get to the ending uh, in a minute. Let's talk about Ryan Tannehill at quarterback. Um, I think what I said last week is kind of ringing true. Tannehill isn't that much of an improvement over Marcus Mariota. I think the score is the same either way. The one thing I will say is I think Tannehill has a little bit uh, stronger of an arm. I mean, he's kind of zipping it in there a little bit better. He's throwing it to A.J. Brown, which is nice. I mean, this this team has some talent on it, and I think Tannehill, um, I think Tannehill is a good fit. I really do. Um, I think I think he's a starter moving forward. I don't think you have any reason to go back to Marcus Mariota. I think the the Titans know what they have in Mariota. They're not they're not going to resign him. Uh, it's probably over for him. And now it's Tannehill's. It, it, this is I mean this is a three and four team. Maybe they have a chance to make the playoffs. I don't think they do. I think they can look at their roster and say, okay, we're going to be a pain in the ass for a lot of teams, but we're going to end up probably eight and eight. Seven and nine, maybe, maybe nine and seven in squeezing the playoffs. I don't even think nine and seven does it this year. Um, may, maybe I think a nine and seventeen can get in the playoffs this year, but um, I don't know. I, the Titans are, are going to be on their edge there. Uh, let's see what Tannehill has because you know maybe maybe Tannehill can can give this team a couple extra wins. Uh, like maybe he can go on a run. I'm a big fan of Tannehill. You know I'm a Dolphins fan. I I loved him in Miami. I, I love him. I liked him in Miami. Um, looking back, I think I was maybe a little too high on him. I thought he had the potential to be the franchise that he never really became, the franchise quarterback. And uh, the end there, I think I blamed injuries maybe more than I should have, and, and looked fondly on a uh, a season or a career that wasn't that impressive. Um, but nevertheless, he played very well for this team. Um, put in, put his team in good situations to uh, win. And I mean, honestly, the, the whole the whole last minute of the game, where it was all that craziness, that doesn't happen if he doesn't get the uh, the two or three inches that he needs on fourth down. And that wasn't his fault. I mean, he did he did exactly what he's supposed to do. He he tried to fall forward and he just didn't. I mean, it, it's that's not on him in my opinion. Uh, this game wasn't as close as maybe the Chargers made it look. The Titans controlled this game all the way through, uh, and they played a good football game. They really did. On the other side of the ball. Philip Rivers is no longer able to elevate his football. This football team um, it is difficult to say because Philip Rivers has had a great career. I I've always been a fan of his. I think it's kind of over for the uh, Chargers. I think Philip Rivers should ride off in the sunset pretty soon in the the way that Eli did, um, which you know wasn't much of a ride off, but. I just don't see a guy that is able to elevate his team to winning. Yeah, I just don't. Um, he's he's a good quarterback. You know, if if he has time in the pocket, if his receivers are getting open, yeah, he's going to get the ball to his guys. Uh, if that's not happening, if he's getting any pressure in the interior, it's over because Philip has no lateral quickness whatsoever. And you know, he's he's throwing hospital balls all over the field. You know, just high balls where the receiver has to jump and get in, gets crushed over the middle. You know, that's that's scary for any any quarterback to be throwing the balls like that, especially a veteran uh, like Phil Rivers that should should be able to uh, control 
the trajectory, or at the very least, should know not to not to put the ball that high. Uh, and he's doing it consistently. So I am worried about the. I mean, I don't think it's it's not a hot take to say the Chargers are out of it this year. I think this is the last season for Phil Rivers. I, I'm you know last year we kind of saw a decline at the very end of the season. You know we've seen the decline. I feel the, from the beginning, and and this is this is kind of the nail in the coffin for me for Philip Rivers. Um, the, I will say the Chargers are ravaged by injuries. I mean their their guard Force Lamp, uh, I believe, is out for the season now. Uh, that, that just happened this past week. It's a tough situation. It really is. They're I mean the Chargers are seem to always be injured, and um, and and this is this year is no different. And I know the Chargers came in with such high hopes, and it feels like that's just such a Chargers thing to do. Uh, the second you get high hopes, they just they crush you, and then they're now they're two and five, and I mean they're not going to have a winning season this this year, uh, and they're they're going to be looking for a quarterback. And I think I, they they what they really need to do is draft a uh, training staff that can keep their guys healthy because that whatever's going on in uh, LA right now needs to change as far as uh, keeping their guys healthy, the train, the weights, room, all that crap. I don't I don't know what to do. I don't know how you change it, but got to do something because it's not working right now. All right, uh, before we get to last thing, Jeffrey Simmons came back. Uh, he was a first-round pick for the Titans, uh, interior defense lineman. He is, I mean, from the very beginning, uh, he's killing it, absolutely killing it. He was a monster up front. Um, you know, only one game. This is his first game of the season. First game as a as a uh, NFL player, and I mean, he's 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 everything he was built to be. Uh, Titans made a great call, uh, picking a guy for the future, and I mean, now, now the future is now week seven. Absolutely worth the wait for what uh, he is able to do. Um, all right, let's get to it. Chargers fumble the ball on the half yard line. The Titans win the game. So the Chargers, uh, they get the ball after Tannehill isn't able to convert fourth and whatever, uh, fourth and inches on basically a midfield. And the Chargers go down the field, and, and they're in a position where they have to kick it for a field goal, but you know, you're know you always a little scared as a Chargers fan trying to kick the ball, so you really want a touchdown there. Uh, you, you see kind of a, uh, a, a catch and run from Eckler to uh, the half-yard line where he almost gets in. It's ruled a touchdown, called back. And I thought it was a touchdown. It wasn't. And, I mean, after further review, I agreed that it wasn't a touchdown. But at the time, I thought it was a touchdown. Um, they get stuffed. They get stuffed again. And, you know, they think it's a touchdown. And then, uh, and then again, you think it's a touchdown. It stopped at the – or uh, Josh Gordon is stopped at the one-yard line. And then you see that it was a fucking fumble. Insane game. And uh, the D lineman uh, – it, uh, recovers the ball. It was a clear recovery in the end zone. Touchback. Titans win. Absolute crazy. Here's my biggest thing here, and I and this is tough to say because we're about to talk about Pat, uh, Pat Patrick Mahomes in a, a couple uh, a couple minutes. But why are the Chargers not QB sneaking it there? You're on the half yard line for the win. You're telling me Philip Rivers can't get a half a yard from. Right under center, you telling me he can't fall forward? You can't try to let him fall forward on third down. The uh, I, I did I saw some on Twitter. Um, a Phil Rivers has only done a QB sneak one time in his entire career. Now he's he's rushed on fourth down more than that, but the, he was only done one planned QB sneak in his entire career. That is the lowest and. In the entire NFL, they have the lowest percentage of success running the ball on uh, on third or fourth and short. This I don't know what it is. I don't know why Phil Rivers won't QB sneak it. I didn't realize that was a thing, but it is. And the, the Chargers just don't do it. They don't do it ever. Um, that's that's crazy to me. That is absolutely wild. Um, they had a chance to win this game. QB sneak is the most efficient play uh, from the. Uh, one yard line or with one yard or less to gain is the most efficient play in the NFL. Um, it has, a, I believe, a 76% success rate. I mean, it's easy. You 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 fall forward. That's all you have to do. Uh, I mean, it works every time in Madden too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, it's amazing the Chargers are able to you know consistently lose games and and that alone. And I know it's not fair. 
you know, Eckler fumbled the ball on the goal line earlier this season, loses the game. Now uh, Gordon fumbles the ball on the goal line, loses the game. This team, I mean, shit, this team needs to change something. I, I don't know. I don't know what you changed there, but God, um, in the most uh, important situation, you're losing the ball. This, this is. Uh, I don't. I don't know what to say. I don't know. Uh, that's rough for the. Uh, that's rough for the, the Chargers. The Titans kind of uh, kind of steal a win, honestly, because they they didn't deserve to win the game based on that defensive stand. Like the Chargers went down the field. Two three minutes left, and yeah, that was it. I am going to stop talking about the Titans and Chargers because I've gone way too long on them. We will move on to the Saints and the Bears, and the uh, biggest takeaway from this game: uh, Saints wins uh, thirty-six to twenty-five. Biggest takeaway from this game: Trubisky is it's over for Trubisky. I was a big believer in Trubisky last year. Earlier this season, I recanted that and I said, you know what, I was wrong with Trubisky. And now I'm I'm ready to say one like he's done. It's he is an absolute bust. Um, I I don't know. I I'm absolutely amazed at his inability to progress as a uh, NFL quarterback. You see him making mistakes that, that college quarterbacks aren't making. Uh, he can't throw a, a three yard pass to the flats to one of the fastest uh, players in the NFL in uh, in Tariq Cohen for an easy first down in a must have situation. He has to kind of run out of the pocket and throw a duck. Um, it, it's it's inexcusable at this point. I I will say there needs to be some uh, blame to Matt Nagy, and I think Matt Nagy's had an issue for, with uh, Trubisky for a long time. I think if you go back and you look at some of the things that he said about Trubisky over the past two years, even as uh, as uh, long ago as maybe the second week of the season, I believe it was uh, for the Bears and last year. He's been saying, you know, little things that lead me to believe he's not been a uh, big Trubisky fan. And now Trubisky's really struggling. The Bears are really struggling. And this is on Matt Nagy because, I mean, the, the, the NFL figured out your offense in the first season. It was great for the first couple weeks, but the NFL's figured it out. And we haven't seen anything different. We haven't seen any uh, progression. Any uh, any kind of uh, what's the word I'm looking for um, in, ingenuity? Yeah, it's it's just the same shit. They're not running the ball enough with a quarterback that can't throw. They're they're not. I mean, they're not creative enough, which I'm surprised to say because I really thought Mike Nagy would be the creative offensive coordinator that he, he you know or the creative offensive mind uh, that he was built to be. I really bought into the Matt Nagy uh, the Matt Nagy plan for the Bears. And it's not working out, and um, a lot of that has to do with Trubisky, but some of that is on Nagy. I mean, he's he's putting Trubisky in a position to uh, to make plays that Trubisky just isn't consistently able to make. He's just not. So I think it's I think it's that simple. I really do. Uh, on the other side of the ball, the Saints. Um, I mean, <laughs> it, it's a it's a complete 180 from <laughs> from talking about the Bears. Uh, the Saints. Uh, are absolutely. I mean, their their play design is so so amazing. They had a play, guys. They had a play where they they run the ball with a fullback. It's a fullback option to uh, to Taysom Hill, where Taysom Hill uh, gets the ball and he can either throw it or run. And he they it's a fullback option. He pitches it to Taysom Hill, and Taysom Hill rushes upfield for twenty yards. And can you imagine? Can you just just Play it out, Super Bowl. You have a, you have a your third quarter uh, in a close game against the Patriots. You run a fullback dot to the right, pitch it to Taysom Hill. The the linebackers uh, flow to Taysom Hill, and Taysom Hill stops, looks, throws it down the field to Michael Thomas, or <laughs> shit, throws it in the flats to uh, to uh, uh, Kamara. I mean, there's so much you can do, and and I really believe that, that this this uh, coach, this offense is able to do absolutely whatever they want. Sean Payton is is a genius. I mean, he is he deserves to be probably coach of the year because because Bridgewater is not winning these games. Bridgewater is not leading his team to victory. This is this is Sean Payton. This is play design. This is week in and week out being underdogs against the Jaguars and the Bears and beating them both 
you know, they, they've destroyed the Bears, and they controlled that game against the Jaguars. I mean, the, the Saints, the odds maker in Vegas are off on the Saints altogether, and the Saints are better than people think. I mean, the Saints are good. They're, they're just going to get better because they're about to get Drew Brees back, and I don't care about the conversation of should we start, should we keep uh, Brees out for another week and all that crap. I don't think it matters in the sense that Drew Brees – can come back from uh, from the bye healthy and ready to go, or they can they can play the game with uh, with Bridgewater and still be really good and still have a chance to win. Um, yeah, the Saints are, are amazing. They have not lost a game. They have not lost a game with Drew, with uh, Bridgewater starting, which is awesome for Bridgewater because he is making enough plays to uh, to win and succeed. But it, it's really awesome for Sean Payton because Sean Payton's putting him. In a perfect position to uh, to succeed, and he, they're doing. It. I'm I'm really excited about the Saints. I'm really proud of like, or pretty really excited for what they've been able to do given the adversity that they've faced this season. Now let's talk about the Seahawks and the Ravens. The field was not pretty. It wasn't as bad as the 49ers field, but uh, it was. Or excuse me, it was the Redskins field, but the 49ers game. The uh, the Seahawks field was not conducive for uh, for fast players. I'll put it that way. Uh, it was wet. It was slick. Uh, we you saw if you watched the broadcast that uh, Lamar Jackson was struggling a little bit. I would argue that this uh, field was more conducive for Lamar Jackson, not in the sense that he was able to run to what he would have liked. Because he wasn't. I, I understand he was slipping. You saw multiple times where he wasn't able to make a move uh, the way he maybe would have liked to. Uh, but on the other end of that, he's still the fastest guy on the field. He's still the most electric guy on the field. And every defensive player that was trying to tackle him had that much harder of a time trying to get to him because he's still elusive. He's still fast. You know, they, the water doesn't take that away. And it slowed everybody else down. Everybody. Um so in that sense, that was a big help for the Raiders in my, or excuse me, for the Ravens in my opinion. Uh, Lamar Jackson, I mean, killed it. Really, really did. I had over a hundred yards rushing. Um, he had, I mean, he, I mean, no one could touch him really. Uh, on the other side of the side of the ball, Russell Wilson pretty much lost the game when he throws the pick six to Marcus Peters, which I mean, it was awesome. That was Marcus Peters first game as a Raven uh, gets a pick six. I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, didn't like that happened to Russell Wilson in a game that I would have really liked the Ravens to have lost, but it is what it is. That's life. Um, anyway, the Russell throws the pick six. The first interception of the year gets taken back to the house, and um, the, the, the Seahawks really weren't able to uh, come out of that hole um, and then, uh, of course, there was a uh, fumble return for a touchdown, which completely put the game out of reach. But at that point, the game was pretty much out of reach anyway. Uh, makes the final score 30-16, to when it was a lot closer of a game than that. Uh, the fourth quarter just got out of hand really fast for the Seahawks. And what it really what it boiled down to was a 95-yard uh, drive from Lamar Jackson and the Ravens uh, to score a touchdown. Took up the majority of the fourth quarter. And there's nothing the Seahawks could do because they constantly kept getting the the uh, Ravens into third down, and Lamar Jackson just scooted for 10, 12, 15, 30 yards, whatever it was, uh, and whatever play it was, and just drove his team down the field, scored the touchdown, and that was that was game over from that point on. I want to combine the next three games, last three games I want to talk about because they're all kind of blowout wins. Um, we'll talk about the Cowboys uh, beat the Eagles, uh, thirty-seven to ten. The Eagles have a legit issue on the back end of their offense, and I think area of their defense and the any proficient offense that plays them should know how to beat the uh, Eagles. And I, I think any good offense is gonna succeed against the Eagles. I think that's the biggest takeaway for the Cowboys in uh, Eagles game. Uh, Cowboys dominated. Chiefs dominate the Broncos. I'm going to talk about that actually last because I do want to talk about Mahomes for a second. And then uh, the Patriots dominate the Jets, 33 to zero. Um, those were all. Those were all the uh, the primetime games. They were all blowouts. NFL 
why are you scheduling blowouts? I, I Eagles Cowboys are I'm an issue with. Some games are going to be blowouts. So you can't. You don't know what the final score is going to be. So I'm I'm good with that. Sounded like a good game on paper. I don't know that the Chiefs Broncos ever sounded like a good game on paper. So why are you putting that? I mean, it's Thursday night game, so whatever. But why are you putting the Patriots and Jets on Monday night? It just doesn't make any sense to me. Like these primetime games should be like the best games of the week, right? And there's a lot better games. And I understand that every team has to get a primetime game. But, I mean, the Patriots get plenty of primetime games. <laughs> and the Jets are the Jets, so they can get a different game. They can get a more... I mean, you could put the Bills-Jets. That would have been a good one. I mean, I don't know, man. I, I, it just doesn't make sense to me. But we'll move on. Let, let's talk about... Let's talk about uh, Patrick Mahomes gets hurt on a QB sneak. Dislocates his... Uh, his... Uh, his kneecap, which I mean, that's a that's a weird one. Only three to six week uh, recovery time, which is um, surprising. Honestly, I was surprised to hear that. I thought it would be more. Um, it sucked, man. I was actually at work watching this game, uh, and I wore my Patrick Mahomes jersey that I got for my birthday. And it, to see him get hurt was just so demoralizing. Uh, you know, is the Broncos and they they weren't really able to do anything on offense, and the Chiefs were, you know good enough. They didn't do a whole lot on offense after Mahomes gets hurt, but I mean, Matt Moore, who's the next Dolphins backup, uh, was out of the NFL last year and came back to be a backup for the Chiefs after uh, after Hedy gets hurt. And now, you know, now he's the starter for the next three weeks, presumably. I believe Henny is on IR. I don't remember his injury because I don't keep track of every backup's injury, uh, but he should be available to come back at some point if, if it isn't a season-ending injury. I just don't remember and um, and their backup right now, the backup to Matt Moore this week is uh, a local Vandy quarterback by the name of Kyle Shermer. Yes, that is right. Vandy quarterback might have a chance to start the rookie undrafted uh, QB out of Vandy, uh, the uh, son of head coach, Giants head coach uh, Shermer is a backup for the Chiefs. And I mean that matters to nobody unless you're from uh, Nashville and you follow the the uh the uh Commodores at all as I don't I try not to but you know here I am. Uh, I'm kind of excited. I, I I almost hope that uh, Kyle Shermer gets the play. I'd love to see that. I really would. Um but as far as Matt Matt uh excuse me, as far as Mahomes goes, I it's it's tough to see. I think this team can still be okay. Uh, I mean, they're they're probably not going to win a lot of games. I don't think without Mahomes, just because the defense is so reliant on the offense putting up a lot of points, or else that defense they, they're just not able to play. Um, they're 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 not going to be able to stop a lot of people. And uh, that offense is is really at this point designed for kind of a, you know, they, they don't really have a run game right now. Their offensive line isn't great. They're struggling a little bit, you know, keeping protection. And, you know, Tyreek Hill's back. You know, their receiving core is awesome. But how much does that matter when you have Matt Moore throwing the ball? I mean, I don't know. Matt Moore is a, a capable backup. But, I mean, we're talking about a, a, a team with Super Bowl aspirations uh, loses their starting quarterback. That's huge. And it's going to be interesting to see. Hopefully... I mean, they're they're five and they're five and two right now. Hopefully, they can win enough games. Uh, it, really, you just hope that Mahomes doesn't come back to a sub five hundred team. If they can stay five hundred, come back in week twelve, week thirteen, and go on a run, they're probably going to make the playoffs, and they'll probably be just fine. You know, assuming he can get, you know, a six or seven win team when he comes back. You know, win two games, win one game at least, he'll be fine. Uh, and that's assuming he's on the longer end of that injury, which you have to assume the Chiefs the Chiefs have to know that, that this this injury is far more important than this season. It just is. Because if the, if the Chiefs don't make the Super Bowl this year, it's not the end of the world. If Patrick Mahomes has lingering issues with his knee, it kind of is the end of the world for the Chiefs. Because that's, that's it. I mean... <laughs> Uh, the way the way we're looking right now, the Chiefs are a contender every time Patrick Mahomes is on the field, and that's that's just the way it is right now. He really is that good, um, and it, it's tough to see. You you never want to see the stars in the NFL get hurt. And the last thing I want to uh, I want to leave on this as far as talking about the games, 
this is I, I saw this notification on my phone and I genuinely thought it was a joke but it's from Adam Shevner it was a video on Monday uh, Monday Night Countdown where they're talking about Tom Brady leaving the Patriots and I just wanted to bring this up um, I will link the uh, the video in the description below um, but it was basically the, the gist of it was Tom Brady has put his house for sale his trainer has put his house for sale and uh, he does have a void in his contract to where he can be a free agent next year if, if Tom Brady wants to be. Um, that is really interesting, which the, the biggest part of it that I want to talk about that the guys on, on uh, Men Night Countdown didn't talk about is the fact that this team doesn't need Tom Brady. And I might get some hate for that. I, I you know, don't welcome it, but I accept that, you know, that's a, that's a very uh, controversial thing to say. But they don't. <laughs> I mean, this team is complete. Like, right now, the Patriots are defense and control the football. That's all it is. And there's a lot of guys that can go into this Patriots offense right now and be proficient. There just are. I mean, Tom, and Tom Brady really isn't killing it. <laughs> he just isn't. I, I don't, I wouldn't have any fear. Like, it, this, is, this is where, this is what I'll say. If Tom Brady got hurt in this Monday night game, because I don't want to put it in the future and you know have to knock him wood or anything, if Tom Brady would have gotten hurt in this past game, how different is their season outlook with the backup, with uh, the guy out of Auburn? Um, can't remember his name off the top of my head. Uh, it was a third or fourth round pick out of Auburn, uh, uh, Stidham, Jared Stidham. How different is their outlook? They're still gonna have a great defense. They're still going to be able to... Stidham can throw to a running back out of the backfield. Stidham can, can throw to a slot receiver. Stidham can can take a couple shots downfield when he needs to. Stidham will still have a great offensive line. Yes, you're losing Tom Brady. Yes, you're losing the, the GOAT. You're losing the, uh, the ultimate gamer uh, when it comes to crunch time. But right now, Tom Brady is 42 years old. He he's he's playing on borrowed borrowed time, as as uh, it's alluded to in the uh, video. And I just I don't know how important Tom Brady is to this franchise. And does Tom Brady look at that and be like, No, I'm still the guy. I want to go somewhere where I am important to this franchise. And I've been I've been sh I've been you know praised in the media. But shit on by my, you know, I, I don't say shit on, but it's it's commonly known that, that Bill Belichick, you know, constantly says, oh, the 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 high school kid could have thrown that ball, you know, on, like never gives Tom Brady, uh, you know, star treatment or anything like that. Um, does does he want that? You know, he just never seems like the guy who has. But I mean, Tom Brady is transcend sports. I mean, he's not just a, you know. A, popular or, or famous football player he's a famous figure <laughs> and you know you don't have to care or know anything about the NFL but you know Tom Brady you know you know Tom Brady you know that you, you know his uh, era his, his legacy everything um, so it's it's interesting it, it's an interesting conversation not something I ever thought I'd be talking about and you know I know there's greats all over you know NFL history that have finished their career with other teams that maybe you know weren't weren't the team that they're gonna be uh, you know get inducted into the Hall of Fame with. It'd be weird to see Tom Brady not finish his career with the Patriots, especially after the trade of Garoppolo, especially after all that that happened. You wouldn't think that this would be even a thought. And this is Tom Brady choosing to leave because it seems to me Bill Belichick has said, "Okay, I can win with Tom Brady. I don't. <laughs> I can win with anybody. <laughs> I don't. I don't need a quarterback that can throw the ball. You know." 30 times a game. I can uh, cultivate a great defense. I can cultivate a great run game with a, a slew of uh, dynamic backs. And I can throw, figure out a million different ways to throw the ball to the backfield and uh, create yard and create points that way. Um, I don't need Tom Brady. Is, is that the thought? Is that the, the theory that, that Bill Belichick's going to go with and that Tom Brady's going to look and say, no, you do need me. I'm, I'm the greatest of all time. I'm going to go somewhere else. Uh, and if he does go somewhere else, how different is that? How how different is it? I mean, where, first of all, where does he go? Which I don't even want to kind of discuss that. I don't want to think about that. But if he did find the perfect situation and he failed, well, 
I mean, does that take away from your legacy? I mean, no, you're still you still won six Super Bowls. You failed as a you know forty three year old quarterback with another team. That's not really you know the worst thing for your legacy. But it, it does give guys like me who have you know probably have always considered Tom Brady to be great, but maybe not the most talented quarterback ever. You know, the greatest, fine. Yeah, he's the greatest in in terms of his accomplishments and in terms of the you know being the most important player for the best team in sports for the past 20 years. But, you know, talent-wise, I've always considered the Aaron Rodgers to be, you know, more, more talented, able to do more. Um, that's not, I'm not trying, I really don't want to hate for that. I'm not trying to take any away from, anything away from Tom Brady. Um, but it's interesting. It's, it's, a, it's a weird thing that I genuinely thought was a joke when it was first, uh, when I first saw it on my uh, Twitter feed. And now it's something I'm not going to really be able to stop thinking about. Every time I watch uh, Tom Brady <laughs> throw an errant pass or, you know, walk off the field at third down, I'm going to think to myself, you know, does he want to be somewhere else? Does he? You know, like the Patriots are the going to win the Super Bowl this year and he wants to be somewhere else? I'm probably. <laughs> you put a gun to my head right now. Who am I picking to win the Super Bowl? It's only one team that I'm going to bet on. <laughs> well, all right, guys, I'm going to end it right there. Thank you so much for watching. I know this was a lot longer than uh, maybe the normal normal video time, uh, but I had a lot to talk about. I wanted to, I got into it this week. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe if you want more football content from me. You can uh, subscribe to the Between the Pylons podcast. I highly recommend you doing that. Uh, it, we're really catching our stride in that. Me and Jacob have a lot of really great conversations, uh, so please follow us there and. Uh, come back check us out for check me out for another video coming soon thanks guys bye and even though i didn't follow this rule the past weekend in tunica always remember try and get one percent better every day that's the goal